This is a follow-up on the do-it-yourself harpsichord overview that I did last year. This is the bridge I used as a model for bridge shaping from Frank Hubbard's Five Centuries of Harpsichord Making. It has no slopes. It has a groove. It, it goes equally up, almost like a dome with a groove down the middle in which the Harf, the bridge pins go in. This is my uh, bridge, m my uh, hitch pins uh, and bridge with bridge pins. The string is attached to the hitch pin uh, down close to the soundboard where I believe it should be. The uh, string is going over the bridge, which is sloped to where people suggested, back towards the uh, hitch pin, which would logically seem to keep the, uh, the string down on the hitch pin. But it doesn't in all cases. The, the strings should contact the, the metal pins. They vibrate much better in pitch than when the string touches too much wood. When the string touches too much wood, it is almost muffled. So the brightest sound comes from the best contact with the uh, bridge pins, the best contact you can get. Now here is the, uh, the nut on the rest plank. The nut, ironically, I've shaped in opposite to the way I shaped the slope on the bridge, which I don't understand at all. I mean, I can theorize as to why it might have been preferable to have uh, opposite slopes on the nut and on the bridge. Uh, generally, the thought is the less wood, the, the less wood the vibrating string is in contact with, the brighter sound and the truer the pitch. That's all I can suggest. I, I just thought of that as I was starting to do this video. Okay, so we can see exactly what it is we need to do and how we need to cross the bridge and the nut and how the string needs to touch the bridge pins and the nut pins. And I, I believe now that that issue is more important than voicing the plectra. I, I, I'm really wondering. Uh, now this is, a, this is a picture of a French harpsichord con with its strings contacting the nut and contacting the bridge. I can't see the whole thing here. We'll assume you can.